Hello! Today's video is on transcription and translation. My website, sciencewithsusanna.com, has this blank drawing to accompany the video as well as practice materials to quiz yourself. Transcription is the process by which mRNA is made from a gene's DNA sequence. mRNA stands for messenger RNA. Translation is the process by which a protein is made from an mRNA sequence. So, Transcription happens first and is followed by translation. I remember this in two ways. First, the word definitions themselves help me out. To transcribe something means to make a copy of it. mRNA is a copy of a gene, whereas translating something means to convert it into a new language. In this case, to translate from the language of nucleic acids that use nucleotides into the language of proteins, which uses amino acids as its letters. The other way I remember that transcription comes first is that although they both start with the same root word, trans, transcription has a C next, which comes before the letter L in the alphabet. Transcription occurs in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. DNA strands are represented here with these colorful lines. Each strand has many gene sequences, and each is represented with a different color here. Here we'll look at a single gene on one segment of DNA. In reality, this could be thousands of base pairs long, but I will be simplifying the size of all these products throughout this video. This wonderful molecular machine, RNA polymerase, binds to the promoter region of a gene. This area becomes available for binding based on epigenetics. In other words, there are thousands of regulatory proteins called transcription factors that can either make it easier for RNA polymerase to bind here, or there are some that inhibit its ability to bind this promoter region, often by a process you may have heard called methylation. This will ultimately determine when and how often this particular gene gets transcribed and is a vastly fascinating area of research right now. RNA polymerase unwinds DNA and begins adding RNA nucleotides to a template strand of DNA, like this. However, RNA adds uracil whenever a thymine would normally be matched. That's one of the key differences between RNA and DNA. It also uses a ribose sugar in its backbone instead of the deoxyribose used in DNA. RNA polymerase continues adding nucleotides and unwinding the DNA of that gene sequence until the entire pre-mRNA transcript is built. It is called pre-mRNA at this point because most genes have the potential to code for multiple proteins, depending on how the mRNA transcript is edited. Once the RNA polymerase reaches the end of the gene, the sequence triggers release of the mRNA transcript. This sequence is composed of codons, three nucleotides that code for one of the 20 different kinds of amino acids. All mRNA transcripts start with the codon AUG that codes for the amino acid methionine. In my example, arginine is next, then serine, then proline. But what's this? A stop codon right in the middle of the transcript? The transcript can be edited at this point and produce this mRNA. But this is just one option. The original pre-mRNA continues on to code for histidine, leucine, another leucine, aspartic acid, and glycine before reaching another stop codon. That earlier stop codon can be spliced out, amazing, right? And produce this transcript too. I'll use this processed mRNA as our example. It leaves the nucleus through nuclear pores. Then, the translation of this mRNA transcript into protein occurs in the cytoplasm on ribosome machines. The ribosome has two pieces, or subunits, and the mRNA transcript fits in between these pieces. mRNA is read one codon at a time. Once the ribosome reads the codon, it is matched to the correct tRNA, or transfer RNA, anticodon. The anticodon must be complementary to the codon on the mRNA in order for the ribosome to let it bind. Each tRNA carries an amino acid. 
the tRNA that matches the AUG codon always carries the amino acid methionine. The next codon requires a match for CGU, and this particular matching tRNA always carries the amino acid arginine. Once the second correct tRNA is matched to its codon, the ribosome forms a peptide link between the two amino acids. Now the amino acids are covalently bonded together. The next codon calls for the amino acid serine, but the ribosome can only work with two tRNAs at once. So the first one leaves its methionine behind and the empty tRNA is released. The released tRNA picks up another amino acid in the cytoplasm. In this case, it will pick up another methionine. The ribosome will form a peptide linkage between the next two amino acids, and then the ribosome reads the next codon, CCU, and only allows the matching anticodon of the tRNA that carries proline to take up a spot on the ribosome. The tRNA that carried the arginine to the ribosome is now released into the cytoplasm to go find another arginine. The next codon demands the matching tRNA that carries the amino acid called histidine. Histidine's arrival kicks off the empty tRNA that had brought serine to the ribosome, which goes off to bind another serine. The ribosome covalently links proline to histidine with a peptide bond and then reads the next codon, in this case, CUC, which codes for leucine. Leucine happens to be my favorite amino acid since its presence in your food triggers muscle growth after you work out. Its arrival kicks out the tRNA that had brought proline, which then goes off to find another proline. The ribosome forms a peptide link between histidine and leucine and then reads the next codon, which is CUG. And look at this. It codes for another leucine. This is what we call a degenerate triplet, when more than one codon codes for the same amino acid. Now the tRNA that carried histidine is kicked off the ribosome to go find another histidine. The ribosome then forms a covalent bond between the two leucines and then reads the next codon, which calls for aspartic acid. Aspartic acid's arrival ejects the tRNA that brought leucine, which then looks to bind another leucine. The peptide bond forms, the next codon is red, and glycine is brought to the growing peptide chain. The tRNA that brought that second leucine is ejected. The last peptide link is formed between aspartic acid and glycine, and the stop codon is reached. This causes the ribosome to release its hold on the remaining tRNAs and the mRNA transcript. The tRNAs can go find their new amino acids, and the mRNA can actually be translated again by some other ribosome. Eventually, it will degrade, but it can be used many times to make this same protein. So the stop codon releases the protein from the ribosome. The completed protein can be hundreds of amino acids long, and it must be folded properly in order to carry out its function. Now, spend a few minutes reviewing this information Make sure you understand it reasonably well, and then use my Quizlet flashcards to practice and review. See you in the next video.